Dear students, welcome to today's class. In the last class, we have been discussing about phylum Annelida. We discussed in detail about the features of phylum Annelida. Also, we cited certain examples for phylum Annelida. In your syllabus, a particular species is included for type study for every phylum. In the case of phylum Annelida, Neris is included for type study so we are entering to the type study of Neris here we study in detail about different systems of Neris as well as morphology of Neris and other habit habits so in today's episode I would like to talk about Neris morphology and structure of parapodium Once again, welcome to today's class. Here we discuss in detail about Neris morphology, the external features of Neris, in which the most important structure of Neris is a parapodium. So we will be discussing about the structure of parapodium also. Neris or belong to the genus Neanthus. It is popularly named as sandworm, ragworm, or clamworm. Usually, it is found in intertidal zone of sand and muddy shores. Intertidal zone of sand and muddy shores. And its habit is it's a nocturnal animal. That means they are active during night time and mostly inactive during day time. During day time, they will be dwelling in a U-shaped burrows. These U-shaped burrows are seen at the seashores in the intertidal zone of sand and muddy shores. The most common species of Neris is Neris diversicola. And let us examine what are the external features of Neris. The body of Neris is a long, slender, metamerically segmented, bilaterally symmetrical, and dorsoventrally flattened. Here you can see the photo of Neris. This you can see it is a long, slender animal. It's metamerically segmented. You can see the body is segmented. It's a Tamarism is a general feature of phylum Annelida. Since Neris belongs to phylum Annelida, it is also metamerically segmented. Numerous segments are there. And the body is dorso ventrally flattened. Body is not exactly cylindrical, but uh, dorso ventrally flattened. A flattened body is uh, having the The body color varies with the species. The color 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 But usually, in the case of uh, nearest diverse color, it is brown in color. But in some other species, there is steel blue or greenish color also found. And the body surface always exhibits iridescent shades. Some their body is sometimes shining, so iridescent sh sh shades are seen in their body surface. And then their body is divisible into three regions head, trunk, and tail. Tail also called pygidium. Then the head region is further divided into prostomium and peristomium. Head is further divided into two regions prostomium and peristomium the prostomium it is actually not a true segment it is a globular extension of peristomium actually the segments 
begin from peristomium prostomium is a an extension from peristomium you can see this is the peristomium that is first segment first true segment is a to be peristomium from the peristomium there is an anterior extension which is called prostomium the peristomium actually formed by the fusion of first and second segments so this peristomium and prostomium together constitute the head region on the prostomium there are different structures mainly there are four structures on prostomium first the two pairs of pigmented dorsal eyes you can see two pairs of pigmented dorsal eyes they are dorsally placed here you can see in actual picture four dorsal eyes are there two pairs they are arranged in two pairs then a pair of prostomial tentacle here you can see one ten, a pair of tentacle this is called prostomial tentacle then there is a pair of prostomial palp here there is an anterior extension namely palp prostomial palp there is a pair of prostomial palps then a pair of ciliated lateral pits or knuckle organ there is a ciliated lateral pit on the lateral side that you cannot see in the figure on the lateral side there will be a small pitch a sensory organ which is called knuckle organ so these are the structures found on the prostomium then look at the peristomium peristomium is actually formed of by the fusion of first and second segment first and second body segment together fused to form peristomium peristomium bears the ventral mouth on the ventral side of the peristomium there will be a mouth then on peristomium there is four pairs of peristomial tentacles two dorsal and two ventral there is here you can see the peristomial tentacle in actual photograph you can see tentacles here a pair of tentacle on one side is placed it dorsally so it is called dorsal tentacle and here you can see the ventral tentacle so totally there is four pairs of tentacles in which two pairs of dorsal tentacle and two pairs of ventral tentacles here you can see the enlarged picture of the dorsal and ventral views of prostomium and peristomium this is the dorsal view and here you can see the proboscis this is actually the part of digestive system and it will be studied later in detail then in ventral view you can see the mouth this is the mouth this is the peristomial segment and which bears the mouth on the ventral sides then after the head there is trunk trunk is the longest part of the body formed of numerous segments about 12 to 200 numbers the segments number of segments varies from 12 to 200 and each trunk segment bears a pair of lateral processes namely parapodia here you can see these are the segments after the peristomium till the last segment or pygidium there is numerous segments these segments are together called trunk region there will be 12 to 200 numbers of segments and on each segment there is on lateral side there is a process there is an extension on the lateral side these are called parapodia parapodia
here in this picture you can see the parapodia clearly on the lateral side there is a walking legs like structures or or like structures these are called parapodia then that is about trunk region then the pygidium the last segment or anal segment is called pygidium which represent the tail tail part which bears a pairs of a pair of filamentar process namely anal cirri here at the pygidium you can see an anal cirri a filament like structure a pair of filament like structure uh, directing backward from the pygidium that is called cirrus singular cirrus and in plural cirri this is called anal cirri because anus is opening out at the pygidium the need is grows by addition of new segments just in front of anal segment need is grow cheyumbo grow cheyunnad engena ee pygidium pygidiyathinte tottu mumbai kondu pudhiya segments add cheyittaanu need is grow cheyunnu adondana enna idinte age koodunnadanu anusarichu segment inde enna koodi varu Now let us examine in detail about the structure of parapodia parapodia is also called side feet because it is found on lateral side of the trunk segments that way it is called side feet they are fleshy lobular muscular lateral processes each trunk segment has a pair of them here you can see the enlarged view of a parapodia it is a very fleshy and lobular it is found of many lobes mainly two lobes are there there are two lobes this is one lobe this is another lobe and these major lobes are again divided into sub lobes and it is a lateral process located on lateral side of the trunk segments and each trunk segment bears a pair of them on either side of the segment then this is the principal locomotor organ used for swimming and crawling when it is in water it is used for swimming when it come to the sand sand it is used for crawling you know they are living in the intertidal region so sometimes there will be water and sometimes it will be dry if it is if there is water it is used for swimming if it is in the sandy dry sandy area then it is used for crawling then parapodia also serve as respiratory organ because its lobes are glandular and richly vascular therefore they are called foot gills parapodia inde mattoru function aanu respiratory function adhaayidu Uh, the parapodia is highly vascular there are numerous blood vessels is supplied on the on to the parapodium using these blood vessels and also they are very thin so then the gases exchange takes place on the surface of the parapodia thereby they are called foot gills foot gills then they are provided with a bundle of chitinous bristles see, called setae and several sensory filaments namely cirrus you can see here numerous bristles these are formed of chitin so they are chitinous bristles they are called setae then also there are certain structures like cirrus they are sensory structures and this parapodia is a biramous structure with two symmetrical fleshy flattened halves upper notopodium and lower neuropodium here the parapodia is divided into two large lobes or it is divided into two equal halves the upper half form a large lobe this is called 
notopodium this is called notopodium then the lower part or in the ventral side there is another lobe this is called neuropodium these halves are again bilobed the notopodium divided again into a large lobe and small lobe these small these lobes uh, lobes are called ligules ligules and the notopodium bears a slender process namely notopodial serous or dorsal serous this is the notopodium and on the notopodium on the dorsal side there is a projection which is a sensory structure namely dorsal serous or notopodial serous and similarly in the neuropodium also there is another serous on the ventral side so this is called neuropodial serous or ventral serous and these notopodial setae are usually absent in second and third pairs of parapodia second and third pairs of parapodia contain no setae all others are containing setae and setae are lodged in, in a sac namely setigerous sac setae are lodged in a sac namely setigerous sac to which setal muscles are attached and used for protrusion and retraction of the setae is seated or protected on one another, seta can be protruded out or retracted inward. Portekum ulalekum seta edkanu, portek talanu ulalek valikan ulurgaru, seta kundu. And the carnum seta lodge the tila sac, there is a teacher of sac way to connect the two, there is setal muscles. So when the setal muscles contract and relax, when they contract, the protrusion occurs, when they relax, the retraction occurs. So protraction and retraction of the setae is facilitated by the setal muscles which are attached to the setigerous sac. Setigerous sac is a sac to which the setae are lodged. The notopodium and neuropodium is a strong bristle embedded in middle that is called aciculum. Here you can see a strong bristle, it is a strong thick bristle. This is embedded almost in the middle of each lobes, notopodium and neuropodium. This is called aciculum. This is called aciculum. Aciculum. It is an internal skeleton and provides surface for attachment of setal muscles. The aciculum acts as the internal skeleton of parapodium and to which the setal muscles are attached. Thereby, the as it is an internal skeleton, it provides strength to the parapodium. Then, near the base of parapodia, there is a minute nephridiopore except in first and last. Except in first and last parapodia, there is a minute nephridia for at the near the base of the parapodia. So this nephridia for is meant for the excretion. Then let us examine the structure of seta. I told you the parapodium can is provided with numerous seta which is lodged in the acicolum. Uh, sorry, it is lodged in the setigerous sac. And this seta are arising from large formative cell located at the base of setal sac. These are developed from a special cells, namely formative cells, present at the bottom of the setal sac. Then seta has two portions. When we analyze the structure of the seta, it has two portions. A basal segment stalk or shaft. Basal segment is there, which is called a shaft or stalk. Then there is a terminal segment, namely blade. This is the, and they are together joined from at a particular joint. And this is the typical structure of a seta, parapodial seta. And the seta is of two types. 
seated with long and thin shaft and long slender and straight blade this is one kind of sita here the shaft is long and thin whereas the blade also slender and straight but here the second type of sita here the the, the shaft is stout and short whereas the blade is is broad blade is broad so, so there are two kinds of sita long bladed and broad bladed sita is there so this is about the structure of the sita so i hope all of you understood this topic very well so the remaining part of the near east type study will be discussed in coming episodes so thank you for listening thank you very much